Uh, this comes from the research uh, by um, Guskovitz and uh, McCray. They did work uh, for the NFL about uh, 10 or 11 years ago. They found that there were parameters that could be followed to assess recovery of the athlete when they could come back to play. So uh, if, you th if you think of the organization of the nervous system as, as like a tree with roots and a trunk and branches, or like a building that has a foundation beneath the ground and then a skyscraper. The first system that's, that's altered and affected has to do with the balance system. And so they devised a, a scale and they published articles. And, and this scale looks at the ability to, to, in three different positions, on the non-dominant leg, legs together, and one leg in front of the other, on a flat surface and then on a foam surface, being able to maintain balance with your eyes looking straight ahead, with your hands on your hips. And points are given for the ability to do that for 20 seconds. And they found that <clears throat> the balance scores are higher, meaning that there's more errors, within the first two or three days. And most athletes recover to an acceptable score within about a week. In the emergency room, if an athlete's had a concussion or a person's had a motor vehicle accident, the standard test might be to walk a straight line, to follow somebody's fingers. But to my knowledge, there's no incorporation of this modality in emergency rooms. So I'll be speaking to different emergency rooms across the area and introducing this as a concept so that doctors will be a little bit more skillful in detecting balance problems. Another uh, area to assess, of course, is cognitive abilities, memory, and attention. And let's see if this works here. I put together here a sample of a computerized program. You, you may have had already today some more extensive lectures by experts on neuropsychological testing. But for the audience here, I prepared just a snippet of a, a few minutes from a computerized program that I use in my office to evaluate skills. The computerized program is a modification of the program called IMPACT. IMPACT was what was used to transfer evaluation of athletes from detailed neuropsychological testing from the NFL to something that was simpler. And now another company called CNSVS has put this out and it's available uh, for doctors and for psychologists. So this one test here is called the shifting attention test and it requires a person, first of all, to have an intact visual field, the ability to distinguish two different colors. So if you had a field cut from an injury or you were blind or you were colorblind, this wouldn't be a good test. But it asks you to shift your attention and uh, to inhibit your attention. The object of the test is to match colors and shapes based on rules, and the rules will change. At first, you'll be shown a colored square or a circle at the top of the screen, and the rule will say match the color or match the shape. And at the bottom of the screen, on the right or the left, there'll be two shapes. Remember, this is in the context of evaluating somebody that had an injury. This wouldn't be evaluated at the, at the sideline nor in the emergency room. But by the time somebody comes to see me, I want a little more detailed test of their attention. This is not a memory test. Match the color, and it says, Press the right shift key. This is very difficult for a person that has complaints of attention problems. You have to be able to read, and you have to be able to identify shapes. So it's, it's based on that sort of assumption here. OK, so, so that gives you a little idea, perhaps, about attention. It's the end of the day, you're tired etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But imagine you had attention problems that was going on for a while. This becomes one way to look at it. Another way is to ask a person to spell a word. Spell the word forward and backwards, or count the months of the year, or do digits. But I find this is a good little test. You've probably seen this study. It's a little bit older. Uh, it talks a little bit about the epidemiology of brain injury. The importance of this slide here, I, I saw this slide about uh, three or four years ago. I, I took it from a talk for brain injury in the military and the civilians at the Rusk Institute in New York a couple of years ago. The idea here is that 80%, the lighter blue, really is, is filled with the majority of brain injuries. And it's in this 80% that about 10 or 15%
go on to have post-concussion symptoms. Most of the focus on brain injury, of course, uh, at this conference and with the organization is about moderate and severe, and that's graded on the glass calcoma scale. My talk here is more about mild. Causes change according to age and location. I mentioned athletes and, of course, concussions from athletic events. But balance is, of course, a problem in the elderly, peripheral nerve problems, accidents, falls, in certain locations, assaults. The, uh, the front page of the Tribune today uh, had a picture of a woman that was severely beaten. Her husband's in jail for five years, and uh, she was assaulted. And I suspect that because of her injury, she suffered a mild traumatic brain injury. So depending on the, the culture and the location, uh, causes or, or vary.